Hi, it's Penny here. Welcome to another reading vlog. This week, the main physical book I'm going to be reading is Artemis by Andy Weir. So I have read The Martian and Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and I did like both of them. I possibly had problems with both of them as well, like with The Martian. I just found the, the problem solving really addictive and I couldn't put the story down, even though I do think, even though uh, the main character, Mark Watney, who gets stuck on Mars, he's very likable, but there were a few bits where I was like, oh, yeah, but he's one of those guys, isn't he? <laughs> just a few lines I didn't really enjoy, but mostly very enjoyable. Uh, then Project Hail Mary is kind of the same thing where mostly I really liked it. Um, again, I found the problem solving very addictive, but he was also one of those guys, and it's hard to describe, like a nice guy, but just like vaguely sexist in a way that's hard to really pin down, like not really a problem, but kind of occasionally just rubs me the wrong way. And like, even though I know I read The Martian much quicker, I now think, I actually think more about Project Hail Mary these days because of a certain surprise character that you get. If you've read it, you know. Um, anyway, Artemis. All I know about this so far, I did start it last night and I got like one chapter in, not very far. So we're following this woman named Jazz who was moved to the moon when she is six. Most people who live on the moon in this like moon colony are very rich. However, of course, there's people who are just working there and she is one of those. Um, she kind of works as like a delivery person but it seems like she's also involved in some dodgy smuggling and I feel like I'm being way too harsh on Andy Weir and sexism at this point but I will point out both as male characters from the other two books are written as like likeable guys that everyone gets along with whereas so far we've got Jazz and she's a criminal and doesn't seem that likable, doesn't seem like a people person. And I know that this book is his least liked work, like the one I hear the most mixed reviews about. And I can't help but think, is it because he made it a woman character who is less likable? I don't even really know what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I've started this. I do really like stuff about the moon, so I'm hoping I will really love it, even though I've got mixed expectations. Um, the other things that I am reading, um, I am about halfway through Dark One Forgotten by Brandon Sanderson and Dan Wells, um, which is kind of a spin-off, I think spin-off is the best way to say it, of his Dark One graphic novel series, um, which is kind of like a portal fantasy type thing. Uh, so in the audiobook that I'm listening to, and it's really just like an audio dramatization type thing, um, because it's written as like a true crime podcast, and we're following these young women as they try to investigate uh, like they're music students at university and they're trying to investigate this very famous violinist that they have discovered uh, disappeared and then pretty much everyone just forgot about her entirely and they're trying to investigate why, what actually happened there, where did she disappear to. Um, you can see with the link to the graphic novel maybe what happened. Anyway, I'm finding it very addictive, so easy to get through, but I think right now I need to put it aside because I also have Witch King by Martha Wells and my library Libby app is telling me it's going to return itself. There's a whole queue so I can't renew it. Uh, so I need to read it in the next three days, including today, which is already half over. Um, I don't really know what that one's about or I did, but I've forgotten. So I guess I'll start that and then I'll give you a proper idea of what it's about. Um, but that's the the main three things I'm going to be trying to read this week. Hello, so I'm feeling really dnf -y. is that a mood? Um, firstly, let's talk about Artemis, uh, this one. I just don't know if I'm gonna like it. And I think the problem is, like, both in The Martian and in Project Hail Mary, we've got kind of a guy who's a really smart engineer in this life or death type situation, trying to solve a problem that's like really important. Um, whereas in this one, we've got Jazz, who's a criminal, and it seems like the problem she's going to be trying to solve is that she wants to do a crime or needs to do a crime to make some money. Uh, and also, like in The Martian and Project Hail Mary, you're kind of like following along with these characters through their problem solving process, whereas in this one, it seems like he's more going to go along the road of Jazz has a plan, and you're seeing her implement the plan, but you don't know what the plan is because she hasn't really talked through the plan with you. So instead of feeling like you're going on the journey with her, it's like you're watching her do something. 
So it's a very different experience. Also, I kind of feel like with The Martian and Project Hail Mary, Andy Weir's probably writing a character that's kind of similar to who he is as a person, whereas this one he's tried to write a, a woman who is a person of colour, neither of which he has any experience of, and I just don't think he knows what that experience might be like. And I think I was talking last time a little bit about how his books sometimes feel a little bit sexist but like in a vague way and I think it's just like a lack of awareness. Um, I, I looked up some different people's thoughts about it online and there were a lot of people on there trying to defend him and say I don't think it's deliberate and honestly I agree I don't think it's intentional in any way it's just like a lack of awareness and so like for most of the book it's fine nothing's amiss there's no problems and then just every now and then there'll be a line which just hits wrong uh, that's how it was in The Martian and Project Hail Mary, and there were like just a couple of lines in the whole book. Not a problem, really. Not too bad. Um, this one, I guess it's the same. There's only been a couple of lines that have really made me think, oh, um, but I'm not very far through it. You know, I think I'm only like 70 pages in. I just think Andy Weir shouldn't be writing from a woman's perspective because he doesn't know what a woman is. So I'm thinking about DNFing it, but I might give it a couple more chapters just till it becomes clear what Jazz is actually doing. And I guess that's also the difference between this and The Martian and Project Hail Mary, is both of those other books we straight away had a clear idea of what problems we were working with, whereas this, it's still not even really clear. And actually I'm gonna say there's one, the one line that really hit me last night, and there's a bit where she describes a character as Hitler's wet dream and it just really took me out of the story I was like oh oh anyway I don't know I don't know I think maybe I should DNF it uh, the other thing I've been doing is listening to Witch King so this morning on my run I did actually manage to get all the way to 60% through because I've just been listening to it every chance I could because like I said it's going to return itself to the library uh, not tomorrow but the morning like 6 a.m in the morning after that so if I'm gonna listen to that audiobook I need to like hurry up and get through it. Unfortunately, like as soon as I started listening to the audiobook, I thought, ooh, this is not the kind of audiobook I like. I just don't like the narrator's style. And listening to it, I think part of the problem is, I'm not sure if it's him or if it's the book, but it just feels like lots of really short sentences. So the narration's never really getting into any kind of a flow. I, I don't actually think it's the book because I've been listening and I think quite often when it's a longer sentence, he's still just reading it in small sections, which makes it feel like that monotonous rhythm. But I'm not sure that it's actually there in the book. But as well, like actually the audiobook started out with like what's obviously like a glossary of all the different characters. And like that's not the way that I want to hear that kind of thing. I would much prefer if that's if you think that's what we need for the book which I do think that's what we need for the book um I prefer it to be included as a separate pdf I, I don't want to listen to that I can't jump back to that to hear the bit that I need I, it's useless and like there are so many characters and you're never really properly introduced to them is it because it thinks you're going to be looking at the separate list of characters I don't know uh, and just like everything about the world is never really explained you're just kind of thrown into it and I often like that but not in the way that it's doing it here where just nothing's explained and you're never really like put in a situation where you can figure it out properly uh, I don't know it could just be the audiobook so what I'm thinking for this one is that my library does actually have the ebook available so I might pick up the ebook and like switch between reading this and reading that and see whether one of them wins out as making me want to continue it or whether I just decide to DNF them both. I don't know. Uh, the Witch King, I keep putting the in there. I think it's just called Witch King. Witch King, it is a really cool concept. So what it turns out is that this guy is actually a demon and there's like this situation where this particular group of people, uh, when one of them's going to die, they will summon a demon to like take over that body. Um, so we're kind of getting bits in the past where we're having him get his first body and then have this other kind of big adventure. And I actually quite like that bit in the past. But they're also getting like the present time where he's woken up in a new body. He doesn't know what happened to his previous body. He doesn't know like who this body he's now in really belongs to. 
uh, so he's trying to figure out like who killed him, the previous him, and who he is now. Although he doesn't actually seem that bothered about who he is now. So like the concept is cool, but that second like present storyline, nothing much is happening. It's a lot of explaining things about the past storyline. I don't know, but I'm 60% of the way through. I was thinking definitely I would DNF it at the start of my run. By the end, maybe I'm kind of interested in the story because of some certain things that happened. And maybe if I try the ebook, I will be more interested in it, but I'm not sure for the ebook. Like, should I go back to the start? Or should I try and pick it up halfway? Honestly, I don't know what the best thing to do is. Hello, so since I gave up on the Witch King, it's just Witch King, it doesn't have a the. Uh, since I gave up on the Witch King audiobook, it's still right to say the in some sentences. I don't know why this is breaking my brain at the moment. Anyway, since I am not reading the Witch King audiobook, I moved on to or moved back to Dark One Forgotten by Brandon Sanderson and Dan Wells, and I finished that off because it was pretty quick. And I did really like it. The only thing is, I feel like this one is going to, or probably has already, uh, struggled to find its audience because probably most people that have heard about this or have an interest in picking it up are people who read a lot of Brandon Sanderson's like more epic fantasies, whereas this is like a younger, kind of like a paranormal thriller type thing. Like the thing I would compare it the most to is like Sadie, where it's like a podcast style audiobook and like that's that's like the way the story is being told. Although Sadie I think was half podcast and half more typical traditional uh, narration style. Anyway, I think this one is struggling to find its audience but I still think it is a lot of fun and I could see some people would really like it but those probably aren't the people that are picking it up especially because it's listed as being connected to that Dark One graphic novel which is like a fantasy graphic novel but I really don't think you need to have read that to enjoy this because I have read it but I've forgotten it all and I don't think that mattered. I guess the other thing is that it's this podcast style audiobook uh, but as it goes on it becomes more just like recording more live events as they happen because there's a lot more action and it would be hard to express that I guess as someone just explaining things in a podcast although the podcast had like a lot of interview style bits as well. Anyway, I think the summary is I found it a lot of fun, but will I think about it a lot in the future? Maybe not. The only thing I really liked, I can't really talk about because it's spoilers, um, but there's some messing with memory stuff which is quite interesting. So since I finished that off, I thought I needed to pick up another audiobook and then I was thinking about all the books that I'm reading so far in this blog and I was thinking mostly what I am reading this week is or popular authors less popular books. So like Andy Weir, I'm trying to read Artemis, Brandon Sanderson, I'm trying to read Dark One Forgotten which I haven't really heard hardly anyone talk about. Uh, Martha Wells is well known for the Murderbot series but I'm reading Witch King which isn't getting as glowing reviews. And then really the audiobook I need to pick up next is Sharpens by Joe Abercrombie and I have picked it up uh, and I realized that it could still kind of fit into this theme because I had a look at the number of ratings for the different books in the first law world and weirdly Sharpens has 20,000 less ratings than the next book in the bigger world. And I guess because it's a short story anthology a lot of people have just decided to skip it or maybe some people have started with that final trilogy instead of starting at the beginning. I don't know but I think we can still kind of say that it's one of the least popular books or the most least read, most least? The least read book in the first law world and I was thinking that's weird that it's been skipped because like why would you skip things? in this world. Um, but so far I have listened to the first two stories and now I'm beginning to wonder whether this anthology is really necessary. Although I mean I've only read two of 13 short stories so I can't really judge it yet. Uh, but so far really all we got is a little snippet of this guy kind of observing Glockta who's one of the protagonists from the first book's trilogy. Uh, kind of when Glockta was in his glory days which is very different when we meet him in the first trilogy he's like a crippled torturer. Um, so it was just a, basically like a different view of Glockta but it wasn't really telling you anything you didn't already know. 
Uh, then there was another story about this thief and I'm not actually sure if it's a character we've met before. I can't remember, but I don't feel like anything that happened is going to have a bigger impact on the world. So, I don't know. Uh, they're fine. Like, they're well written. I don't know if I'd even call them fun, though. Like, little glimpses of the world. Maybe nice for fleshing it out, but so far I haven't really gotten anything from it. But I really just listened to it while I was doing some weeding, so... I've barely gotten into it and tomorrow, if it doesn't rain, I'll go for a run and we'll get further into it probably. What else? I haven't read any more of Artemis because any time I sit down to read, I think should I pick up Artemis or should I pick up Witch King and instead I pick up Witch King. Even though I'm not really getting through that very fast either um, because I decided to go back to the beginning and I I think that was the right call because rereading it, I'm like, there's so many things that I didn't really have a grasp of. And I think it's just because it's so sparse in description. And so in an audiobook, uh, the little bits of description that you do get that you kind of need to extrapolate out yourself, you don't have the time to like stop and do that. Whereas when you read it physically, you can stop and like take in what you've just heard and figure out what it means. And sometimes I like books that leave it to you to figure things out, but really I feel like it's just missing description that is important for you to get the feel of the book. Um, and I feel like, especially in the past storyline, it's almost there at like building up this group of like magical people from different sides of this battle or like different kinds of magical people. And it's meant to be like a kind of a found family type Thing. I think that's the feel it's going for, but I don't feel it. And again, I just think it's because there's not enough description, there's not enough character development, but I am still enjoying, enjoying that past timeline way better than the present one. The present one is still just really empty and the characters that are being introduced don't seem to matter. And it seems to be spending a lot of time like just talking about the things that are happening in the past timeline. I'd rather just be getting more of the past timeline. So I'm only 36% of the way through, which means I haven't even gotten as far as I got when I was listening to the audiobooks. The audiobook I was 60% of the way through. But also like I can't imagine reading this without knowing the thing that happens about 60% of the way through. I just think I wouldn't even care at all. So I, I can see why the, the average rating is not as high as I would have expected from Martha Wells. And I actually also realized that Witch King was on my five star predictions list. Yes, that's not gonna happen. But I am at least enjoying it, uh, reading it physically with the words uh, better than the audiobook. Like I'm no longer thinking of DNFing it. I'm just thinking it's not gonna be a favorite, but it's okay. Good morning. So it is Sunday, which ideally would mean that I am finishing off all the books that I have in progress. Uh, I made a change kind of to my video plan with the idea that I would put vlogs up pretty much like just after the week ended. And I'm now realizing that that's very impractical in terms of wanting to have the flexibility to run things like an extra day or two if I still want to finish a book off. So maybe I'll be changing the plan again already. Uh, but anyway, I am making pretty good progress on Witch King and Sharp Ends. I think Sharp Ends, I was just listening to it while I did the washing. So I've only got three more short stories, which is not very much. To be honest, the audio narration is great. Uh, the writing is still good. There are some really funny bits, but mostly the plots of the stories don't really seem to matter and so I'm finding it hard to like pay attention or to really care. Uh, there is one group of characters or a couple of characters that we're kind of getting a longer running story of like every second story or something is going back to them and that's probably the most compelling part of things because it's an actual story sort of but also it's kind of um dropping in whenever there's action which is my least favorite part of stories so then I'm just frustrated that we're not getting the parts of the story that I would want to hear and also I'm still just not really sure that anything that's happening in that story has any relevance to the bigger events which is more of what I'm interested in when it comes to the first lore world and just like most of the rest of the stories are kind of just giving you a different perspective or like a bit of backstory to things you already know from the other stories and so I don't know I, I just 
don't really find them that interesting. I don't feel like they're adding anything. So <laughs> I think last time I was saying, why would people skip this one? But maybe you can skip it. Maybe it's fine. I mean, I won't really know until I read that final trilogy, but I don't think anything in this short story anthology is important. And I don't really feel like anything in it is meaty enough to feel like it's worth it for itself. Uh, the other thing I have been doing is continuing Witch King. So I think I'm now 80% of the way through. What I did notice is the percentages of the audiobook didn't line up with the percentages of the ebook, which I guess makes sense because some words will take longer to say than they will to write. But anyway, I got up to where I had been before and then I have continued. I do think about where I was before is where you start to get interested and like start to care about the characters. I think 80% of the way through I am now invested in the story, but you shouldn't have to wait like to be halfway through the story to finally get invested. And I just, I still think the story is just lacking in so much description. There's so much about the world, like it's obvious that the world building is there and the way the magic works is there, but the way it's being presented to you, I think takes away from a lot of the impact of how cool some of this stuff is. And the way the characters are being presented to you is almost like you're supposed to know the characters already, which you might if you'd gotten the past story and then the present story. I really think like interleaving them like that was a bad call. And like if you wanted to set up in the beginning that they were going to be betrayed later on, you could have done that. You could have just had like a little snippet at the beginning that's like here's what's going to happen at the end and then you could have gone back and told the whole story. When I, when I say you I mean Martha Wells. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna finish it, but I think it's feeling decidedly like a three-star book. But I think I can maybe finish that, mm, it's already 11.30, but I can finish it today. Will I try and pick this up again tonight when I go to bed? Probably. Will I decide to DNF it? Possibly. Hello, so I have finished some things, which means it is time to wrap up this vlog. Uh, firstly, I did finish off Chapin's on my run this morning, and like, it was fine. I will say, I think the third to last and second to last stories were the most like creatively written, so from that perspective they were the most interesting. And then actually the very last story uh, gives you kind of a different perspective of the Bloody Nine or Logan from the first book, and I have to say I'm actually really struggling to resolve that perspective uh, with the Logan that we meet at the beginning of the first book. Like I get it, but also I don't, and also like it was very over the top in terms of its like horrible graphic violence, and like sometimes I appreciate that with Joe Bagrami that he doesn't like hold back at all, but Ugh, that was gross. So I don't know. I think it was really well written. I think like it's everything I like about Joe Abercrombie's writing, but it's also everything I don't like about Joe Abercrombie's writing. Like it's the great writing, the humor, the great lines. Often I like what he's trying to say in the stories and the characters are so well developed even in these little short stories, but does any of it matter? Not really. And I think the only story I felt like really gave you more was that last story. But as I said, I don't really know like what to do with that information. Uh, then as well, I finished off Witch King and I'm so conflicted about it. To be honest, I kind of want to have a little bit of a rant about how I think it should have been a trilogy instead of a standalone. Like I think the story that it presented as the past, the first half of that should have been the first book of the series. It would have ended with this like grand escape and it would have given you time to like meet all the different characters and also really see the terrible things that like the bad guys were doing in the beginning. And then the second book should have been the second bit of the the past where we're forming this coalition and I think you, again it could have ended on this really great feeling of we've achieved something but as well like throughout there you could have introduced all the different factions and really like looked into the theme of different races or like different magical beings working together and like in that book you could have really solidified all the different characters that you need to know for the last book, which would have been the betrayal, which is essentially the present. Um, like 
coming off the highs of the first two books into that betrayal I think would have had a much bigger emotional impact especially if that second book had ended on the death of a certain character which in Witch King you don't get to really experience because in the present it's already happened and in the past you never get to see it so like I think at the end of the second book that character death being the ending but also like the beginning of the coalition could have been amazing and then going into that betrayal would just have felt so much more emotionally impactful and then because you had all the background from the first two books the investigation into like who was the betrayer would have been something the reader could have engaged in and like actively participated in because you would have known all the different players whereas the way that it is written you don't even know what's going on so you're just confused the whole time so I know people are always saying lately oh a fantasy standalone how great nah give me a fantasy trilogy Witch King would have been a million times better as a trilogy we could have really gotten to know these characters and I feel like there was so much potential there to love but the way it was written just was so lacking and like by the time you get to the end of the story and I think you appreciate what the story is it's just disappointing that the story isn't what it could have been anyway I did finish it like it's it's three stars it was fine but it, it could have been amazing but I think instead uh, most people are going to pick it up and just be struggling to engage with the story even though it has some really cool concepts in it oh anyway then as well Artemis I did read another chapter last night and I decided I'm gonna DNF it I think I made the right call I looked up a plot summary on Wikipedia this morning and it just seems all really boring and pointless um there's a bit about her having uh, like a disagreement or not liking this character because she's stolen her boyfriend like all her goals just seem to be around criminal activities like at the end of the book it looks like she's still a criminal and has she really achieved anything major or anything significant not really it, it didn't really look like she was solving any interesting problems the whole way through the book like I just think the Martian Project Hail Mary are so successful because of that problem solving journey but also in those books we kind of have characters who are mostly alone or have very few interactions with other people this one Jazz is often interacting with other people and it's kind of awful to read and as well like the whole criminal conspiracy thing that's going on I just don't actually think it makes so much sense so really I just I think most people should just forget that this book exists. Uh, read Project Mal Hail Mary. It's, it's the best of his books for sure. Was there something else I read? Oh I read Dark One Forgotten. I already talked about that. That was the best book of this vlog actually. But also a difficult one because I think the people who will really like it aren't the people who the author normally appeals to. Anyway that was my week of reading. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books because I would love to chat with you about them down in the comments or otherwise let me know what you've been reading lately that has been exciting. Uh, do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.